What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video walking you guys through how to install Ubuntu Server 20.04. Okay, so as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to go through and show you guys how to install Ubuntu 20.04. As we all know, Ubuntu released its latest long-term release, and they always come with a server version as well. So let me go to their website and show you how to actually download Ubuntu right fast. Uh, so let's just type in Ubuntu, and actually I already had a link down here, but it's Ubuntu server or Ubuntu.com. And actually, let me click here first, uh, because once you once you go to their main site, uh, Ubuntu.com, then all you have to do is click here under downloads and then go to the server version. Just click on that 20.04 and it will store down downloading the ISO for you guys. So you just save it. I already have it downloaded and saved. So I'm going to start with the install after this point. But once you download the ISO, the first thing you want to do is actually burn the ISO to something. So it could be a USB stick or it could be a CD if you still have one of those around or a DVD. You know, if you have one of those around, you could burn it to a disc or burn it to a USB stick and then boot up into the system on whatever hardware you're using. Uh, for my case, I'll be using VirtualBox. So let me go down and open that up for you guys so we can go down and go through the install. OK, so I have virtual box manager up and running. So the first thing you want to do is actually create the virtual machine. Uh, and that's meaning just setting up all the hardware for it or the virtualized hardware for it. So I'm going to name it uh, UBS 20. And that's basically Ubuntu Server 20. Uh, and it auto, it'll automatically select Ubuntu for you as the OS you're installing. And then let's set up our memory. I always give my stuff about two gigs. Two gigs is fine for a server uh, with not much, you know, on it as far as like a desktop or anything. Uh, and then now we create the hard drive. So I always use VirtualBox this image because I use VirtualBox on virtually all my machines. So I can move VMs back and forth if I need to. And then the next thing you want to select is dynamically allocated. Uh, and this is basically telling VirtualBox to not take up the full amount of the hard drive space that you uh, specify for the virtual machine uh, up front. It'll grow as needed. That's what dynamically allocated means. And then fix will actually take up that specific amount of space on your hard drive, uh, even though it's not even using it. So what you want to use is dynamically allocated. So let's go next. And then this is where it's going to store the VDI files. Uh, so we can actually, I like to bump it up. Uh, 20 is fine. So we can hit create. Boom. OK, so now we have to go in and actually adjust some more of the settings of the virtual machine. And if you watch any of my videos, I've walked through this process multiple times. So refer back to one of those videos if you if I lose you, because uh, I wanted to kind of move a little fast so I can get to the install. But uh, I really go into system settings. I already have the, the memory set up uh, and then I change the processor. I always give it like two processors. Um, and then I bump up the memory. And this is kind of a standard thing I do in, in case the OS I'm actually working with requires something different. So uh, and then let's go down here to the storage. This is where we'll add our ISO. And this is kind of like uh, <laughs> if you look at it, it's kind of like uh, you're sticking a USB into the system or are you putting a CD into the CD drive on your system? So I always check that box live CD DVD. So it'll boot right into it. And then let's go down and go down here. The last thing I normally mess with when setting up VMs, I always I like to use bridge adapter. And that's only so the VM can pull its own IP address from my on my network. So it'll look like it's not even, you know, going through my machine. It'll kind of split my visit my physical network cord and create like a virtual adapter for the VM. And then it'll pop up on my network and then 
you know, go through the whole negotiating and get an IP address. So it'll get its own IP address. And I do that simply so I can connect to my servers or desktops uh, via SSH. And all I have to do is figure out what the IP address is and then I can log into it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So if we press okay here, uh, that'll let us know we're done. So we can go ahead and power up this virtual machine. So you can just double click on it and it'll start it up for you and you'll actually see it pop up okay cool so it's booting up now and one thing it does uh it'll check the iso or the image for errors as you kind of see it I already found some <laughs> failed to send host log message i don't worry about that it's probably because it's not connected to the internet yet so it has to activate that cord and once this thing is booted up, we can go down and go through the, the install. It'll take you right to the install page. Okay, cool. Let me move it over a little bit so it'll be away from my face. But the way you navigate through this uh, installer is pretty simple. It tells you at the top, it says use up, down, and enter key, you know, that's the typical keys that you would use on a system that you're not actually connected to or you don't have an actual desktop on. So uh, we could just press enter for English. And if we go down, if we if we look at this, this is the com keyboard configuration. Uh, this will ask you, you know, to set up the layout. It automatically identified it as English. Uh, so we're good to go. And this is where it actually connects to the Internet. Uh, and one thing I noticed when I installed this previously, I had to go in here and and uh, and click on it. But never mind. It, it went on and pulled this IP address. And that's what, what I was really waiting on. You have to wait for it to pull that IP address. Uh, and so we can hit done. And then right here, it's going to access for a proxy address. If you have a proxy address, go ahead and put it in here. But I don't, so I'm not going to use one. And then it'll automatically set the mirrors for you. Uh, and I'm in the U.S., so of course it pulled a, it connected to a U.S. Uh, mirror. And the mirrors are really where all the packages are stored and all the updates, you know, come from. So that's what that's for. So we can hit done on this by pressing enter. And right here, this is where you would set up your storage or your configuration for your hard drive. And I'm gonna use a default, which is use the entire disk. It's 20 gigabyte disk like we set up. Um, and you can go in and, you know, modify it if you need to by going into the custom storage layout. You can also set up, uh, set up the disk as LVM with encryption. Uh, so it'll automatically go through that process for you if you want to set up, you know, LVM as well as uh, Lux for encryption. And then down at the bottom, I think I told, yeah, I already said that, but the custom storage layout, this is where you can go in and actually set different parts of the OS on different partitions. So let's say you want your home directory on a separate partition from the actual OS then you can go into custom storage, but we're not going to do that. Like I said, I'm going to use just the entire disk. That way, the home directory, the root directory, everything is on the main partition and on that 20, you know, gigabit hard drive. So uh, we can click done. OK, so this is the file system summary. So whatever we would have set up on the previous uh, page would show up here. And as you can see, we're just using a full device so it automatically set everything up for you on that one device and it actually separated the partitions it put the bios uh grub on its own separate partition and partition two is where everything else is located and it's set up using ext4 and we can hit done and this is going to ask you are you sure this is going to confirm so if this is a hard drive just make sure this hard drive you know, doesn't have anything on it that you need because it's going to wipe it. So that's what that step is for is just to confirm that you sure you want to destroy this disk. So be careful that you had the right disk selected. So we can hit continue here. 
All right, and the next step is gonna ask you to set up your user account for the system and it will give it pseudo privileges to the to the server. Uh, and so I'm gonna just type in Josh and then the server name, I'm a UBS20 and then my user account, I'm gonna just name it Josh, which is fine. And then put in my super strong password and press go down and done and then this will actually if you want to start ssh or if you want to uh install ssh onto the server so i always hit uh you, you hit the space bar to select something that will put the x there for you and then one cool thing about it this will allow you to import your ssh keys if you have ssh keys um out there and that's typically how I set up a production server. I always use SSH keys and I turn off password authentication for SSH because you don't want somebody brute forcing it or trying to brute force your server. Uh, you want to make it as difficult as possible, especially if this thing is connected to the Internet and people can access it from the Internet. They'll quickly find that you have a server, you have port 22 open or a non-standard port. They'll, you know, look and start banging on your server doing uh brute force attempts so i always set up my system using ssh keys uh which i'm not going to do because this server is not going to be accessed from outside the the network so you can hit done now this is where you can install a lot of the server snaps i don't know if you guys seen my last video where i did I did a quick install of Zubuntu 20.04. Um, and I think I was saying in that video that they, that Ubuntu is really trying to push these snaps. Uh, you can install certain applications using the regular dev packages. Still, they're still out there, but they just want to put these snaps in front of you. So these are a lot of the, the snaps that they want to, you know, show you guys. So you can go through and check out this list and look at anything you may want to install, like uh, maybe Docker, if you want to mess around with uh, containers. Uh, I did a video on Nextcloud. So that's on here as well. They have a snap for that. Uh, they even have PowerShell, you know, so you can install that as well. But I'm not going to install any of these uh, things. So I'm move past that uh, and press done. And another cool thing about the installer, um, it'll it'll just say that it's installing the kernel and installing whatever applications you put onto it. Uh, well, you can also go down here to view the full log. So if we press enter on that, it'll go through and show you, you know, all the packages that you're looking at or that is actually installing. So this will give you a full installer output. So we can close that and just wait for it to finish. But if you want to look at exactly what's going on then you can go in and look at the full log but right here is just giving you an idea of what it's actually doing instead of showing you everything so i'll be back once the installation is done okay so the installation is complete and it actually took about maybe 10 minutes or so to actually install uh for the full ubuntu uh, server edition so it's very quick on the installation and it probably didn't even take 10 minutes because i think i walked out of here and then walked uh walked out of here because i'm actually grilling some stuff i got some stuff on the grill walked back in here after you know checking everything on the grill and it was done so let's go on and hit the reboot so really all you have to do is you know press enter and that'll reboot the system for you And, and this is one issue I've been seeing. I think this may have something to do with a virtual machine, but for some reason it, it fails to unmount the CD-ROM drive, uh, which that virtual uh, drive that I attached the ISO to, that's is basically a virtual disk drive uh, where it installs or it, holds the cd drive and right now it's, it's unable to to unmount the cd drive so there we go okay cool so it finished i didn't have to hard kill it which is a good thing i didn't want to hard kill it 
And one thing with Ubuntu that's always worked is they automatically detach the ISO from the virtual machine. And also when you when you install it on the physical machine, it'll automatically pop out the CD drive from what I've seen. I've seen it actually do that on my server in the past. And that, that was, you know, 16.04 uh, when I installed it uh, using the CD drive. Okay, so this is Ubuntu Server 20.04. And if you um, not used to the command line, this is really all you'll see. And right now it's still going through and starting some demons. And this won't prevent you from actually logging into the system. I'm not sure if this is a bug because I have I've seen I've seen this happen the last time uh, I installed Ubuntu server. And this normally happens like on the first boot up of the actual system. You won't see these uh, these applications being checked like this. You won't see this anymore after this point. But as I say, this won't actually stop you from logging in. So we can we can log into it. So Josh and then type in my password and press enter. That'll log us into the server and it'll still be running those checks. Uh, but don't worry about it just ignore it. it it'll it'll eventually stop but anyway this is what'll pop in every time you log into the server uh even over ssh you know it'll say welcome to ubuntu uh whatever version uh then the documentation links as well as system load you know processes running memory usage well hard drive usage memory usage swap usage so it's basically just some information on the system as well as the address so the first thing you want to do when you actually log into the system is update the system and we do that by running sudo apt update and press enter this will go out to the repositories and check to see if there are any updates to the system or that needed to be installed and as you can see is six packages that need to be upgraded so we will go through and upgrade those right fast it shouldn't take too long um because it's a short amount of packages so it shouldn't take too long to install okay so that's pretty much it once you you know upgrade update then you can start installing whatever applications you want to install on the server so i mean it, it all depends on what you're trying to use the server for it could be a web server it could be a mail server whatever you're trying to set up didn't this is when you go on set it up however you want or whatever the purpose of this server is for you and just to run a quick htop just to get a little bit more uh but htop is installed by default uh ssh is installed you know we have all that installed so you can go through and install whatever you need for your for your brand new server so uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel uh if you have any questions leave comments down below i'll be doing another video on ubuntu server uh 20.04 just showing you guys some applications that you can install uh right off but as i stated i hope you guys enjoyed the video and of course keep it techie